Now again, pause the video, take some time, write these out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just show you uh, how we use these formulas to solve the problems. Because what's going to happen is typically, let me go back one more page, typically you're going to be given a wavelength. Oh, my arrows are off today. And they want you to find a frequency. The nice thing about the speed of light is it is a constant. Okay. In other words, it's always this value. Now, technically, it's only always this value in a vacuum, but we're just going to use it for our purposes. So that one never changes. So if you know that number, you could figure out uh, the other two if given the, the third value. So here's our basic formula. The speed of light right here equals the wavelength times, oops. All right, sorry about the do barking dog thing. Uh, where was it? Okay, so speed of light equals uh, the wavelength times the frequency. Okay, So let's just say, for example, um, you were given a sample problem that said uh, you have a, uh, a frequency, uh, pardon me, a wavelength that is 8.24 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. Okay, And the question is, what would be the frequency? Okay, what would be the frequency? Well, here's my formula. Notice, I'm always going to be dividing the speed of light of whatever I have. Pardon me, I'm going to be dividing what I have into the speed of light. All right? That's the same way down here also. Okay, so as far as mathematics, uh, if you've done density, you can do this, no problem. So, uh, let's just do this problem. The speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Right, and I'm going to divide that by 8.24 times 10 to the minus seventh meters, and I use my calculator, and I work that out, and I get 3.64 times 10 to the 14th, and I'm going to put per seconds. Notice there I could put hertz, but the only thing I don't like about that is if we look at our canceling. Look at this: meters is on top, and meters is on bottom. It cancels out. What, have I, what are we left with? Per seconds. So I typically always write per seconds. If you write hertz, that's okay, but it makes a little more sense to just to do it that way. All right. So let's try another one. Let's say in this second problem, instead of me giving you a wavelength, I've given you a frequency. And the frequency is 2.64 times 10 to the 14th per seconds. Okay. And then the question is, What's the wavelength? All right. Well, again, we've got this formula, right? So wavelength equals C over V. And the C is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 2.64 times 10 to the 14th per seconds. And when I work that out, I get an answer of 1.14 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, right? Again, we're all about cance canceling units, right? Let's look what I have. On the bottom, I have a per second, and on the top, I have a per second. They cancel out. What am I left with? I'm left with a unit. Let's not forget significant figures. 3 there, 3 there, 3 there, all right? So how are you doing so far? Not too bad? Well, let's say, for example, we've got this, uh, this problem, and we want to find another thing. We want to find this E. Now, E, right here, stands for energy. Okay, And we want to find how much energy this wave has. Because if we go back to our diagram, remember, these are high in energy, right? Gamma rays made the Hulk. X-rays go through us. Ultraviolet causes damage to our skin. Then what we can see, radio waves don't hurt. And so it's a good thing, right? Because they're bouncing all over the place. You can have a radio go, uh, you can turn a radio on at any time, and it's always picking up a signal, right? So it's a good thing that those have very low in energy. And you definitely don't want to put yourself in a microwave and turn that on because that causes some problems. So as we go up, the energy goes up okay so um, 
To do that, however, we need one more new thing. And we need Planck's constant. Now, Planck's constant is a constant that uh, um, Mr. Planck came up with when figuring out exactly how energy and uh, frequency was related. The symbol is this italic H. The unit is a joule second. All right, And look how small this number is. To the negative 34th joule second. It's a really, really, really tiny number. Okay, So all I need to do this problem is... The frequency. Because if I have frequency, I have Planck's constant, which, like speed of light, is exactly the same all the time. And so I can calculate the energy. And by the way, mathematically, if you want to know the relationship, the energy and the frequency are directly related, right? So um, as the energy goes up, the frequency goes up. So let's try a problem. Let's say, for example, I've got a frequency... Uh, that is 3.64 times 10 uh, to the 14th per seconds. Okay? And I want to find the energy. Well, there's my formula. I'm going to put Planck's constant in there. 6.626 oops, times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times... Well, let's see if I can take this whole number here. This would be great if I could. Nice. I like that. Okay. I multiply those two together, and what do I get? I get 2.41 times 10 to the negative 19th. Now, let's look at the unit. I have seconds on the bottom and seconds on the top, so I have a unit of joules. And energy is always in joules. Okay. All right. How's that? Little electromagnetic spectrum, couple formulas, a few constants, kind of exciting stuff, right? Well, what I want to do is I want to throw out a couple word problems and see if you can get them. So pause the video, take a moment to try these, and I'll work them out right for you. So let's look at the first one. Find a wavelength of a radio wave with a frequency of 1.30 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Well, as I've tried to drill into your brain, we always want to write the formula out, right? So wavelength equals the speed of light over the frequency, right? So the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And then our frequency is 1.30 times 10 to the 6th per second. Okay, so what did that equal? Well, according to my calculations, as soon as I find them, according to my calculations, my calculator says 230.77. Now look at seconds, right? Seconds are on the bottom. Seconds are on the bottom. Well, actually, these seconds are on the bottom and bottom, so they cancel out, right? So I'm left with meters, right? Which is good, because we're talking about wavelength. Now, this is five digits, so, right? How many significant figures should we have? Well, because trailing zeros are only significant when there's a decimal, I should have uh, three. So the real answer should be 231. It's one because I'm cutting off after three. I'm cutting off a seven, right? So there you go. There's the first problem. Did you get it? I hope so. All right, let's try another one. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, look at the second one. Pause the video. And for an added bonus, I have added a conversion for you. Okay, so try that. Well, how'd you do? Let's see what I would do. What's the frequency? Well, I like to write the formula first. So the frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength, right? So the speed of light, same as it always is, times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Right? Divided by the wavelength. Now here's our first issue. I cannot put 333 nanometers on the bottom. Why can't I? Well, hopefully you're screaming at the screen right now because nanometers will not cancel out meters, right? So I've got to have the same unit on the bottom. All right? So 
That's why I've given you this conversion, that 1 meter equals 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So this is what I'm going to do, 333 nanometers, and I'm going to convert, which is not a problem because we're good at converting by now, right? 10 to the ninth nanometers equals 1 meter, right? So when I do that, I get 3.33 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, which I'll... Let's see if this will let me put it up there. Oh, darn, it won't. All right, so I'll put that 3.33 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, now meters will cancel, right? Meters is on bottom, meters is on top. I'm going to be left, in, left with per seconds. My calculator says 9.009. It's a 9 times 10 to the 14th. And then my unit is per seconds. Okay, but wait, I've given too many significant figures, right? Did you catch that? Nine point zero zero nine. So it really should be nine point zero one, right? Because I'm cutting off a nine times ten to the fourteenth per seconds. There you go. How's that? Not too bad, hopefully. Well, let's try one more. Then you'll either be feeling great or you'll come to me tomorrow with some massive questions. All right. Green light has a wavelength of about 520 nanometers. Really? Let's look. Hey, look at that. Green light right around 520. They weren't kidding. Okay. What is the frequency? Calculate the energy of one photon of green light. Whoa, that seems like a hard problem to me. But what I'm going to do... To make this simple, so I'm going to take care of the first question, and then maybe this second question will seem a little easier. So what is its frequency? Well, I know the formula to find frequency, right? Frequency, oops, let me try another V, because that's pretty much as bad as it gets. Frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Okay, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the... <coughs> a wavelength. Ooh, a little problem. Look what I have here. Nanometers. Darn it, I gotta convert that, right? So I'm gonna go 520 nanometers. I know that 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers equals 1 meter. Okay, and that's gonna equal 5.20 times 10 to the negative seventh. <coughs> Excuse me meters all right and again our units canceling absolutely and that's important to us so that gives me a frequency of 5.7692 times 10 to the 14th and my unit is per seconds right now I've got too many significant figures here though don't I all right so I'm gonna round that to how many I've got three there and I've got three there so 5.76, ooh, that's, I gotta round that up, don't I? All right, so 5.77 times 10 to the 14th per seconds, right? So now I've got the frequency and they wanna know the energy. Okay, remember that other formula? Look at that formula, let me erase some of this mess over here. Look at the formula. All I need is the frequency and I can find the energy. Not too bad, right? Well, let's go ahead and try that then. I know that E equals Planck's constant, which is H, times the frequency. Well, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times... Ooh, can I bring this down? Let's see if I can save myself a little work. Oh, so close. Hey, there we go. All right. Save myself a little bit of work. Okay, so I'm multiplying those two together. Again, let's look at our units, guys. We've got seconds there. Seconds on the bottom, they cancel. I'm left with joules, which is good because we're finding energy, and energy is always in joules. And so when I work that out, I get 3.8227 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Okay, slight little glitch here though, right? I've got three significant figures there. I've got four here. What should my answer be to? Three, you say? Good. So I'm just going to just kind of rub that out there. 
So that's 3.82 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Okay, so... Hopefully, I know this was fast. I know this was maybe confusing for some of you. Don't panic. It's just a little bit of math. We'll work on it in class. And again, if there's anything that doesn't make sense, please ask me about it. And I will see you soon.